Hey friends, it's Pastor Phil here, and I am excited that you joined me for this week's devotional thought. It is the second week of Lent, so this is our second Lenten midweek devotion. And all these devotions have been digging deeper into kind of the concepts from the past week's sermon. Uh, for example, this past week we talked about Jesus' authority over temptation. It was that one-on-one -on -one battle, mano in mano, Jesus versus the devil. It's the fight, the ultimate good versus the ultimate evil. And Jesus didn't even use a sword, didn't need a machine gun, he didn't need a lightsaber. He just simply used God's word to drive the devil away. Like he mopped the floor with the devil. It wasn't even close. I don't know that Jesus broke a sweat, right? He totally dominated the one-on-one -on -one temptation battle. But you hear about that this past Sunday. I wonder if maybe you didn't think to yourself, well, that's great, Pastor. I just, I don't know what that has to do with me. Like, I see it. Jesus is really good about against temptation. Oh, how does that help me? It's kind of like if you watch the NFL this season and you watch the Super Bowl and you see Tom Brady and he dominates and he gets his, what, uh, fifth, sixth ring, right? And you say to yourself, good for him. How does that help me? Unless maybe you have him on your fantasy team. That's helpful. Or maybe you're watching uh, some of the Marvel shows. You're watching WandaVision. And you see Wanda's powers, right? Scarlet Witch, she's incredible. How does that help me? Just a character on the TV screen. Like, is Jesus some kind of a character that doesn't have any value, any help towards you when it comes to the temptations that you struggled with? Well, no. He's more than that. We're digging into three verses of Scripture. If you want to get out your Bibles and follow along, it's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14, 15, and 16. Here's verse 14. It says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, namely, Jesus, the Son of God, let us continue to hold on to our confession. Calls Jesus a high priest. Do you know what a high priest is? A high priest is like the head of the various priests in the Jewish religious system. It's something that's installed way back in the time of Moses. The high priest would be in charge of ceremonies, of religious ceremonies. They would slaughter the sheep, the goat, the pigeon, what have you, as a sacrifice to God. They were the go-between between between the people and God. There were probably hundreds, if not thousands, of priests who had been priests throughout Israel's history. And i got to imagine that some were better than others. <laughs> like there are probably some that they weren't all that great at making the right incision and cut on the sacrifice. Got kind of messy. Others that perhaps stumbled over their words. They weren't sure what to say. Maybe even a high priest who just said, um, 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 a lot <laughs> as he spoke. Maybe even that high priest who was uh, repeatedly late and not quite there on time. Or even the high priest who their wife didn't tug on the tassels of their robe beforehand to make sure they were straight, not cattywampus, not right. Various priests and high priests at varying degrees of good at their job. What about Jesus? What well, says he's the great high priest? Like there's no high priest who's better. There's no high priest who's a better go between between us and God. Because look at this. Jesus has gone through the heavens. Like he's walked the floors of heaven itself. The gold line floors of eternal glory. Like he passes by the sun. He knows where the stars are held. Jesus has incredible access to the eternal temple of heaven itself. Why is that helpful to you? Number one, Jesus knows true holiness. Like, it's not an ethical discussion with Jesus. It's not like a bunch of professors from a university discussing what may or may not be wrong. It's not society changing, tweaking, deciding what's moral, what's not. It's not the comment section of a YouTube video where people are going back and forth as to what's right, what's wrong, and probably not in all that right of a manner. It is not some guy on Facebook who takes a look at what you posted and has to determine, is that meeting our community standards, is that immoral or not? Hmm, maybe it depends on whether or not I've had my coffee. Click. No, God is holy. Really holy. Which means Jesus, he knows what's holy 
knows what is sin. He knows what is temptation. Like if you're looking to find out what's right, what's wrong, what's a temptation in your life and what's not, you got to go to Jesus. It's the only answer. But Jesus doesn't just know temptation as some kind of a book smart. He knows temptation from experience. Check out the next verse, verse 15. It says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way just as we are. You ever thought about that? Like when Jesus walked this earth, he was tempted in the same ways that you and I get tempted. Sometimes with a divine slant, right? But still, base temptation is the same. Like think about that, that temptation of the devil in the wilderness. He's tempted to not trust God. He's tempted to disobey God. He's tempted to go his own way, make his own plans. That stuff we deal with. And in every way, right? That's what the scripture says right there. In every way, just as we are. That means he's tempted to, to worship other gods. He's probably tempted by the devil to say, hmm, you know, you are the son of God. I know your mother Mary means well by telling you to go to bed to time, but maybe you should scream and yell at her that you're God and you can do what you want. Or, hey, you know that Pharisee over there, they're kind of being a jerk. You, Jesus, it wouldn't take very much. Just kind of wind up and give him a nice pop to the face. Or at the very least, maybe we could spread some gossip about him. That'll, that'll hurt him. He's doing it to you. Get some revenge. Or, hey, Jesus, you know that one lady, she's pretty cute, right? Pretty cute. And she trusts you immensely. You forgave her. You loved her. You could go somewhere private. Take advantage of her. Or, hey, Jesus, wouldn't it be nice to be some of those people that just listen to you and they get to go home and relax? Like, they don't have to die on the cross one day. Don't you, don't you covet their lifestyle? Jesus knows temptation from experience. It means whatever temptation you're dealing with, whatever temptation gets to you on a day-to-day -day basis, greed, lust, hatred, racism, like whatever your sinful struggle is, Jesus knows from experience. But there's one more thing. Jesus isn't your grandpa who comes up to you and says, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. No. Check out what it says at the end of verse 15. It says, he has been tempted in every way just as we are yet, and this is a key three-letter word, yet he was without sin. Like Jesus never sinned once. Jesus always won the battle. Jesus knew every weakness of the devil to defeat him, to defeat him soundly, to defeat him convincingly, to defeat him perfectly. Another reason Jesus is such a blessing to you and me, right? Reason number three, Jesus knows how to defeat temptation. He did it every time. He never lost. Like he knows all of your temptations, the specific ones you're struggling with, and he knows exactly how to defeat it. He's got power. He's got strength. Like, if you're struggling with temptation and you're not turning to Jesus and his word to figure out how to defeat it, you're missing out on a wealth of knowledge from the one who knows exactly how to do it. Right? Jesus knows how to defeat temptation. Even that one you struggle with each day. Even that one you struggle with in private. Even that one that you've sinned again and again and again and again and again, Jesus defeated it. Fully. Check out verse 16. Finally, it says this. So let us approach the throne of grace. That's God's throne, Jesus' throne, with confidence so we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And you get this picture of Jesus sitting on his throne, right? He's the ultimate authority. Uh, there's no reason for him to leave that throne. He is in control. He is the king. He is the ultimate. He's at that throne. But here it says we get to approach him. Uh, we approach him in prayer with confidence. And two things we receive. Number one, we receive grace. Right? Jesus delivers grace. Because the reality is that you and I get tempted to sin and we fall to it. The devil tells us, no big deal, go ahead and sin. And then what happens right after we sin? You know what he does? 
He then comes to us and says, actually, it's the biggest deal of all time. God will never forgive you. Now you're nervous and you're frightened to spend time with God. You're nervous and you're frightened to go with the one who can actually help you defeat temptation. You're nervous, you're frightened to spend time with your Savior. Approach his throne with confidence because he delivers grace. He lived. He died. He rose. He defeated temptation. And he defeated your failures to temptation. Every single one of them fully and completely on the cross. In short, because of Jesus, ready for it, you are forgiven. Jesus delivers grace, and then number two, Jesus delivers help. Like from his throne. Picture that. Sometimes when you're, when you're battling temptation, you think to yourselves, if you're a guy especially, right? You say, I gotta, I gotta do this on my own. I gotta, gotta impress everyone. Well, if you were trying to defeat temptation without Jesus... This is an epic failure. That's like me uh, trying to lift 600 pounds on my own. I'm going to lay there smushed to the ground like some kind of a Looney Tune character. The reality is that Jesus is our strength and he is the one who helps us defeat temptation. You know, my, my daughter Daniela, she's, she's getting better at learning new things and how to do things. One thing she's been working on is walking up and down stairs. But sometimes when she gets to the stairs, she realizes, hey, I can't do this. And she turns around and she says to me, Mano! In Spanish, it means hand. So I come over, I grab her hand, and help her walk down the stairs. Friends, don't be afraid to reach out for Jesus' hands. They're hands that are powerful. Hands that have defeated temptation again and again. Hands that smack the devil straight in the face. Hands that have holes in them. Hands that are alive and well. Hands that will help you. Friends, Jesus' authority over temptation means that we, too, may find authority over the temptations we deal with. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God above, you tell us to come to the throne to receive grace and mercy, forgive us for all of our sins, all the times we fell into temptation, and uplift us to go and to share your message. Help us, O oh Lord, to fight back against the temptations that we deal with, to find confidence knowing that you know holiness and you know temptation. You experienced whatever we are dealing with. I ask you to uplift everyone who's praying with me right now, O oh Lord, uplift their hearts, give them strength to serve you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you'd like to make this more of a worship service, you can check out the links below. There should be some hymns, uh, classic hymns, as well as some modern songs that kind of go with this theme. You'll also find a link to a little bit of liturgy, some scripture. Uh, if you're worshiping as a family, you could read through that together and pray those prayers together to really hone in on Jesus, your Savior, tonight. Friends, thanks for joining me. I'll see you later. <laughs>